All right, Chris, I wanted to go over uh, how to do a time lapse real fast here. Um, so I went and got, got some some still photos that I shot of a storm a while ago. And I have an intervalometer built into my camera. So I was able to just set it to take a picture every, uh, I don't know, maybe five, ten seconds or so. I don't remember exactly what it was, but something like that. You could do something like use a metronome app on your phone and maybe every three clicks tick 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 take a picture on the rhythm um, that'll give you a consistent space in between frames uh, however you want to do it you can also buy a plug-in intervalometer for I don't know probably under 100 bucks and just just look for a, a shutter release somewhere that has a the ability to program time okay so what I've got here, what I've ended up with, is a bunch of pictures, including one with me in it. So we're gonna we're gonna delete that, and so it'll make a sequence. There's more with me. Lovely. So we'll take those away. And I'm just in Bridge here. Um, you should have it. I don't know if you use Bridge or Lightroom, but you know, whatever they do the same thing. So. You can just go in and delete the ones you don't want. And actually, I don't, I don't delete them. They automatically set to reject when you hit the delete button on your keyboard. So you're not actually making them go away. You're just marking them reject and hiding them in this case. I was trying to run two cameras at once. I was running two cameras at once, but not for any particular reason. And then here's another, looks like maybe another angle. Nope, they're just loading in. Okay, so I can keep throwing these away. And I'm going to open them up in camera raw and kind of show you how I make adjustments globally in camera raw so I can, so I don't have to do much with color correction and video editing later on. All right, so I've got all that. I'm just going to select all of them and open in camera raw. You can do that with control R or press enter and it'll actually try to open them into it'll load them into Photoshop <clears throat> inside of camera raw. So maybe All right, sweet. So out of the camera, it looked like. Let me see if I can take it back. Probably looked. Uh, zero everything out. It would have looked an awful lot like this. Yep. Okay, so that's with all my settings zeroed out. It's pretty flat. You know, straight out of the camera. It's all good. So what I do is I crop it to a let's see we'll go to a 9 by 16 crop ratio and then just expand it out you're going to end up you're going to end up losing some of your frame but that's fine All right and then let me just apply that crop up here to the one that I've done other adjustments to. So I want only crop. Click OK. Got it. All right. So what I have, what I've adjusted here is I pushed all the highlights down as far as they'll go, brought shadows up and brought my density down. Contrast is flat. Uh, where it's, where it came from. Push the whites down. I'm just trying to keep that from blowing out right here in this this area on this particular image um, and then I'll usually I'll, I'll end up pushing these shadows up to bring out the shadows down below I've pushed the clarity so everything's kind of you know kind of crunchy and then vibrance and saturation go up too I want that the greens and the, all the warm tones that are in that sunset to pop out too okay and so I've got it cropped I will also apply sometimes it'll do this automatically but uh, on this particular lens it's not automatic so I had to set the lens corrections and the difference is see how it kind of fixes that distortion pulls the vignette 
that happens around the edge. Uh, so I do like to use that. I also like to use chromatic aberration removal. Um, that will remove the pink or the magenta and the cyan halos that you sometimes see around edges on a wide angle lens. <clears throat> this little check mark, check mark right there will get rid of them. Um, and it looks like I also added back a little bit of vignette, just a little. So, so once I've made that change, I can run down to the bottom over here, shift select the last one, and hit synchronize. And I want to set that to everything, so I get the crop and all the local adjustments and everything else. Dynamite. And you can see all of them updated density and color and all that business. So, uh, what I'll usually do is just run through the line and check and make sure nothing goes too dark or too light. If it does, I'll make, I'll make appropriate adjustments to fix that. So, looks like we're good to go. Whoa. Update. Boom. Okay. Sweet. All right, so I've got everything where I want it to be. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna export this. I haven't ever done this before, but I'm gonna try to make a 4K time lapse. <clears throat> and I got the dimensions from Wikipedia. It says that a 4K video is 4096 at the longest dimension. So that's what I'm gonna set the size to down here. So I'm going to set the long side to 4096, and since I cropped to 16 by 9, it should fall to whatever it ought to end up falling to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do 16-bit and click OK. I'm going to select all. I'm going to hit Save Images, and I'm going to do... Let's see here. I'm going to put this on my solid state drive so this will go a little faster. So we'll say 2013 11 7, that's today's date. Storm time lap. Wow. Lapse 4K. Hit select. So that's where it's going to save. It's going to automatically res it down from the full camera size to 4096 4K video. Good. And now we just wait for this to finish here. And while that's cooking, I'll pause, let it do its thing, and we'll come back and grab this, the exported JPEGs here in just a little bit. All right, after the JPEGs are all exported, I've got them into a uh, a folder to work in here, and if we just hit the arrow and run through over there in the previous screen, you can kind of get an idea for what's going to happen. Just let that roll. And I'm just checking to make sure the camera didn't move weird or my head's not in there again. Oh, there it is. So we're going to get rid of those three frames. So since I removed some frames, it's gonna it's gonna put gaps in my file names, and that'll be a problem later on. So what I'm gonna do is go and select all, and do a batch rename, just like that. I'm just right clicking to get here. So I'm gonna change this to storm time lapse. Start with number one. Rename it in the same folder. Click rename. It's just going to go through and name them all so the sequence doesn't have any breaks in it. <clears throat> all right, next thing I'm going to do is go to, go to go over to Photoshop and just double click in the open space there. Go find my folder with all the JPEGs. And all I need to do is choose the first one and then choose image sequence and click open. Now I'm going to change my, I'm going to leave the frame rate at 23976, 23, 23 uh, and 
you have other choices here if you're trying to do something else. Match frame rates to other footage that you have, you can do it there, but I'm just going to keep it here for now. Click OK. And it is going to import all of those images into a timeline right here inside of Photoshop. And from here, I can do... Oh, looks like the camera moved a bit. Oh, well. I'm not going to sweat that right now. That That's not ideal. And there's another picture with my head in it. So... You know what? Where's that camera move? Right after my head. I'm going to just drag this in and cut that off. So it's going to be... It's going to be a little shorter, just so I can... Just because I was sloppy earlier, so... All right, so there we are. We've got a timeline with all the photos loaded in. We can now actually go through and, you know, if you want to apply a curves layer, you can do that, maybe. Hey. Adjustment layer, curves, and so you can sit there and you can adjust the thing globally if you want to. Since it's a mask, if you wanted, if you wanted to get real crazy, you could paint it off. Paint it off somewhere. Yes, I know this looks ridiculous, but you could do this. Now, as far as I know, there's no way to track it, so if this moves across throughout the sequence, the mask would move with it. Uh, that's something that you can use After Effects to do, but as far as I know, that's not available here in Photoshop, so I'm just going to toss that. I don't want to use it. One thing that I have found that's kind of cool is I can take this and make it into a smart object and then I can apply Photoshop plugins to it so if I go to down here to Nick software and do Silver Effects Pro I can actually we'll say oh no it's uh, it's gonna be a smart filter if you do it like this and that's what I want so I'll click OK um, <clears throat> I can go over here and like mess with stuff so I can I can push that structure slider up which makes the clouds really snap, push the contrast a bit maybe, maybe darken it just a tiny bit, I'll click OK to that, and now it has done that as a smart filter over here in my panel, so I can take, actually you know what I'm going to do is duplicate this, so now I've got two just like that, and I'm going to lose, let's see, I'm going to lose the filter on the lower one, so that's, if I hide this, just where I started. So in color. I'm going to take this and switch it over to luminosity and it'll put that crunch over my video but keep the color and but that's only if I do it on the right layer so I want to do it on that black and white layer let that color show through underneath and it looks pretty slick so and it's gonna this is gonna increase your render time just because now it's trying to filter through each frame through that through that filter that I applied. So <clears throat> so there we go, it kind of looks all HDR and I can push the opacity down a little bit if I think it's too extreme. <clears throat> like that. And if I turn that off, this is where I was. And this is where I am now. So <clears throat> yeah, I think that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with it. And then, let's see here. I'm going to also, I've never tried this, but I'm going to try to put an audio track in. So I'll just click Add Audio, and I've got a folder with some, some songs in it. Try that one. And it's way longer than the rest of my video, so I'm going to take this. Actually, come back over here. Move my playhead to the end. Come on. And I think I can just cut. Yeah, boom. Get rid of that. And then. Man, it's thinking real hard with that smart object. <clears throat> Alright, so 
So I'm just going to drag that so it matches up to the end. And I wonder, can I make it... I wonder if I can make it fade out. Oh well. I, I think I'm just going to let it ride. Render it. it doesn't look like it's going to play for me. It's not going to play with music anyway. All right, so whatever. There you go. Um, I think that's all I want to do to this. So all I have to do now is go over here and go to File, Export, Render Video. And I can set all of my stuff right here. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename the file. going to automatically go to the folder where those JPEGs were. And let's see here. We're going to make it a... Let's do H.264 just so it won't freak out on when I try to send it up to YouTube. It won't take 16 years. Frame rate is where I want it to be. Resolution is the same as the still images that I sent out from Bridge. Um, I want it to be progressive. One, color manage. I want the whole thing. And that's it. All I have to do now is hit render. And wait for this to happen and then upload it to YouTube. So that's how you do a time lapse. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and I will try to answer them as fast as I can. Cheers to you. Good luck.